Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Jet Scale Models. And today I'm going to be zeroing in on this loadout f that is in the Tamiya F35 148th scale kit. And uh, why am I starting with the, the bombs and missiles? Well, if you've been building models for a while, you know that the cockpit is where you usually start out. And honestly, by the time I'm done working on that, my eyes are glazed over and my brain is a bit numb. So I want to give these missiles and bombs a good effort in that starting fresh right out of the gate. I'll be able to give these things the concentration and focus that they require. In any case, let's uh, talk about what's going on here. What I'm doing now is after putting whatever I need to put together from the parts and after making sure all the seams were tickety-boo and after cleaning up all the missiles from any defects or knockouts, I then use some Mr. Surfacer as a primer. I'm using a, a gray primer here because these things are going to be a light gray. No point making it harder by using a darker primer. The thing about this is the masking because the little additional package that they put on these things is different in color than the rest of the bomb. The little package that they put on these things is a light gray as are the is the rear fin part whereas the rest of the bomb is an olive drab. So I've tried to figure out a few ways how to mask it off and I'm still not quite sure what's going on but uh, I thought maybe using masking tape and doing this and doing that maybe even making you know a mask on my silhouette machine C AMRAMs. They're a very competent missile that Tamiya has provided here. Priming these out just to make sure that any fixes that I need to do I can see clearly before I get into the final paint jobs and decals. Because that's the important thing, it's just to make sure everything is nice because. I've done missiles and bombs before and I think everything's cool and then you go to look at it later after you've put the decals on and I just get this horrible feeling that I should have taken more time in cleaning everything up, making sure all the seams were good, making sure any defects were taken care of and sanded out before I got into the main color and the decal. I'm just showing you several views of these different missiles and hopefully you're you're getting an idea of how how nice these are it seemed to me every manufacturer of these underwing stores or bombs have their own take on the decal look of these things so i don't know which one's right maybe they change over time 
in any case, I'm just going to use the ones that come with the Tamiya kit. So after the initial priming of the bombs and missiles, I'm going to use an AK Light Ghost Gray for the bodies. For the two types of bombs that are included in the kit, Olive Drab is one of the colors that I need to spray. And as you can see, I have a lot to choose from in different companies and different types. fairly well thinned out because I don't want any pebbly surfaces so what I'm doing is I'm giving it a nice initial coat and I'm not really necessarily going for full co coverage at this point I think what I'm trying to do is just make sure everything is as smooth as possible without any bits of debris or pebbling or orange peel and actually I had to come back after this initial coat after I noticed some more flaws which I corrected I came back and gave everything a second coat the GBU-31 JDAM joint direct attack munition is a precision guided bomb that has played a significant role in modern warfare. It was developed by the United States Air Force in the late 1990s as a cost effective solution to convert unguided bombs into accurate weapons. The JDAM system uses a GPS based guidance kit that is attached to the tail of a conventional dumb bomb transforming it into a smart weapon capable of striking targets with great precision. This technology allowed existing stockpiles of unguided bombs to be upgraded quickly and effectively. The GBU-31 JDAM has been widely used in various conflicts including the wars in Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria where it has proven to be a reliable and effective weapon in the hands of military forces. The AIM 120C AMRAM. The AIM 120C AMRAM advanced medium range air to air missile is a highly capable air to air missile developed by the United States. It was designed to replace the AIM 7 Sparrow missile and entered service in the early 1990s. The AIM 120C AMRAM incorporates advanced features such as active radar guidance, improved range, and enhanced maneuverability. It can engage multiple targets simultaneously and has a high probability of kill. The missile's effectiveness lies in its beyond visual range capability allowing fighter aircraft to engage enemy aircraft from a considerable distance. The AIM-120C AMRAM has become a standard medium-range air-to-air missile for many countries and has seen extensive use in various conflicts and military exercises around the world, contributing to air superiority and defense capabilities. The AIM-9X Sidewinder is an advanced short-range air-to-air missile primarily used by the United States and its allies. It is a development of the long-standing Sidewinder missile family, which has been in service since the 1950s. The AIM-9X Sidewinder incorporates 
numerous technological advancements including an imaging infrared seeker, thrust vectoring control, and improved maneuverability. These features enable the missile to track and engage targets with enhanced precision, even in challenging conditions. The AIM-9X Sidewinder has become a key weapon in dogfights, providing fighter aircraft with a reliable and potent air-to-air -air capability at close ranges. The GPU-12 Paveway 2 the GBU-12 Paveway 2 is a laser-guided bomb that has been widely used by various countries since its introduction in the 1970s. Developed by the United States, the Paveway 2 series transforms conventional dumb bombs into highly accurate and effective precision-guided munitions. The GBU-12 Paveway 2 consists of a guidance kit attached to the nose of a general-purpose bomb which receives laser designation from an external source, typically an aircraft or ground-based designator. The laser guidance allows for precision targeting, increasing the weapon's accuracy and minimizing collateral damage. The GBU-12 Paveway 2 has been utilized in numerous conflicts worldwide, providing a versatile and cost-effective solution for attacking ground targets with reduced risk to friendly forces and civilian populations.
so with these olive drab colors applied uh, the next step was to start working on the side winders and in the past what I've done is I painted the gray color and then come back in and hand brushed the fins with the metallic color and I just found that the unevenness of the application was not to my liking so this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint everything with the silver color that I'm going to use and then once I've done that I'll mask those fins off and then come back in with the ghost gray and paint the body of the missile and hopefully that's going to look a lot more crisp and not so amateur looking you know I want these things to look authentic I don't want them to look like somebody hand painted the fins so we'll see how that goes folks well I'm gonna leave it there for now on this episode uh, come back for the next one where we'll get into more of the final painting and maybe some of the deckling and get these things wrapped up in episode two one thing I wanted to try and do is uh, make a variation in the olive drab. So I used some mission models on the GBU-31, the big bombs. And when I went to work with it later, it just basically reactivated with the slightest amount of water and came off. And uh, yeah, I don't know about mission model paints. I think it might be useful in some aging and weathering situations where you want the paint to come off. But otherwise, yeah, I have to redo all that. So you'll see that in the next episode. In the meantime and in between time, that's another edition of Jet Scale Models. That's a big ass hole.